Well, Mick Ryan, it's great to have you here on Kitchen mm. Songs, and uh, very nice that you've saved me the trouble of travelling to the South Coast. Well, indeed, Sorry, we yeah. couldn't get, to, get it together down there. Well, but if, you came to, to be... if you came to my kitchen, you know, it's, it's galley style. Galley style. Right. So, no good, That's really. It. So you don't sing much in, in your own kitchen, then? Nor in the house, if it comes to that. <laughs> really? I, mean, I don't like to be overheard, and the walls are rather thin between us and the neighbours, and my wife doesn't uh, like me singing around the house, so... I don't tend to, tend to sing in the house. I'd, I would do, all things being equal, but all things are not equal. So, so how do you do all your um, writing and uh, and you well, know, working out songs? Mm, well, Does it yeah. all happen in your head, or have you yeah, got in my head a lot. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I will sometimes go up upstairs to what I laughingly refer to as my study and um, sing very, very quietly to myself. And I've got a little digital voice recorder. I used to have a little handheld cassette thing for mm. putting down tunes but um and, and though so that picks it up very quietly um and i also do it um in the car a lot you know when i'm driving um so yeah that's what i that's what i do i don't tend to to uh, be um singing out around the house um having said that uh deborah my wife did she does know what i'm writing because I, she can hear me tapping on the floor <laughs> Banging, as she calls it, because <laughs> the, the rhythms are very important, you know, yeah. um, especially in a show, because I write these folk opera things, and so therefore, um, there's two things I try to do, is, insofar as it's possible for somebody who's completely illiterate musically, um, I try to make sure that there's a variety of keys, mm. and I'll, the way I do that is... Um, I listen to a lot of um, classical music. I don't listen, nick the tunes, but I nick the keys. So I'll just think around. Let's have a look. They're very conveniently cla classical music. They they tell you what the keys what the keys are. So I understand that there's a basic difference between major and minor. Yeah. You know, in feel. So I think, oh, well, that one was minor. So let's have, go find something in a major key, and it might be C major or something. Yeah. And then I just use it as a kind of launch pad to go off to make a, right. make a tune yeah, a curious up. Curious approach. Uh, if I, I think yeah. if I was to write, if I yeah. had the power to write a song, yeah. I'd write the song and then just move the key if it wasn't in the right key. But, yeah, but yeah. I couldn't do that, you see, yeah. so. Mm. Can I take you back? Because mm. I'd like to know more about your mm. your early musical life and where your inspiration and influences spring from. Um, well, when I um, was at school, I used to write a lot, write a lot of poetry. Um, I didn't sing, you know, I say poetry, like verse. I've always had a gift, I suppose, of being able to write in rhyme and in, uh, in rhythm um, and to scan things and so on. And um, the, um, and may, that could have come, it just occurred to me, because I've just written a song for a new album based on a story my mother told me. My, my mother, used to, when she was a kid, she used to do, um, uh, what's it called? Oh, hang on, it's called Choral Speaking, and which is like the sort of, you get a group of kids or indeed adults, and you get them to deliver poetry, you know, narrative verse, Victorian stuff oh. usually, and you use various vocal but not musical effects. And she knew a lot of this stuff, and she used to just tell it to me when I was a kid, and I used to love them. And uh, there's one that she, that she um, told me that I couldn't, I've been trying to find this living poem for years, never been over I just rewrote the whole thing, you know, made up a whole new song, but based on that story. So anyway, I used to, I was able to write verse, and then um, my friend John Burge, um, when he was about 15 or 16, started to learn to play the guitar and made very rapid progress. He became a very fine musician, and um, I started singing with him and discovered that I could sing as well, and then the pair of us went to Swindon Folk Club, and... Um, we just, I stopped writing from, for about 10 years because we just absorbed all this stuff. I just, we used to go every Mainly week. Mainly traditional? Tri yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to go every week and we'd do about two or three new songs every week for about three years. It was ridiculous. Just soak it up, basically. And then we, well, I say turned pro. We, we scratched a living of sorts um, and, um, and we formed a group with two other chaps, James Patterson and Ralph Jordan, the group was called Crow, it was quite, it was quite mm -hmm. popular, so, yeah. yeah. And um, um, there came a point when we needed some up-tempo up um, 
material that hadn't been done to death by the people. So I wrote a song. The first song I wrote was called um, The Widow's Promise. It's become very popular on the folk scene, um, been recorded by various people. I don't think it's my best song, but it does do the job it was intended to do, which is to cheer things up a bit, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it does that quite well. And the Poozies recorded it, so that they did me a favour in doing that, although they changed the time signature. But there you are. Um, and uh, then um, I, I then gradually started to write um, more and more stuff. So did you have any contemporary songwriter influence? Because most of the people mm. I'm seeing, uh, yeah. you know, name, you know, yeah. Dylan or Guthrie or uh, any, mm. any, any no. of that filter through to you at all? I, the, I, there are what you might call contemporary songwriters that I like. But I wouldn't say I was influenced by them. I mean, you know. Who would you say? I'm interested well, to know who they'd be. Well, I love Joni Mitchell, but you know, I wouldn't write like her in, mm. at all. Um, and I liked the McGarrigals, um, yeah. and um, I, I, I liked quite a lot of Hugh McCall stuff, you know. Um, but then he was mm, in yeah, and I liked, traditional idiom yeah, anyway. Yeah, it was really, I suppose. And I liked, um, I liked early Dylan. The, the songs that, that, that I that Love Is Life that we re mm. did earlier, that is a personal song, but you'll notice that it's distanced. Yeah. It's not me in the first person, it's, it's the voice making it's a general... It's just that you're not, you don't see, you're not very yeah. comfortable in, yeah, in that Yeah, whenever I start writing anything like that, it just, it's rubbish. <laughs> it's just trite, cliche Would, would you rubbish. see yourself as a... Uh, a sort of a people's historian in yeah to some extent I suppose yeah. I mean when, when I do when I'm writing these shows which give me opportunities to write songs I'm writing songs for characters mm. and the characters are based on research um, and the, what I'm doing is I'm empathizing yeah. with them just putting myself in their place so what would they be yes. It's very much the ordinary man and woman. Yeah, things. indeed. Yeah, some people seem to have to do personal stuff, you know. Um, in fact, um, <laughs> my wife once said to me, "You know, why you, you never wrote me a, ever wrote me a love song?" I said, "Well, you know, it's, it just comes out as cliche." So I wrote a song <laughs> called "Clichés," and the words went, "You asked me to write your love song, a love song without a cliche. I try and I try, but it's pie in the sky at this, <laughs> at this moment in time at the at, at the end of the day, you know, etc." <laughs> It's just all cliches. <laughs> so, uh, and it's like a country western number. And, and, and I, I love country music, by the way, but I, country music does tend to deal in cliches, doesn't it, mm, really? Mm. You know. Do you think, um, with the, the fact that uh, you write in a traditional style, or mm. anybody who writes in a traditional style, that, that yeah. the songs that are produced in that way um, have, have a better chance of longevity well they, they have they have a better chance of longevity in if the folk scene change though it must do mm. the, provided the folk scene lasts i think that they'll have some some uh, longevity mm. on that basis sort of thing um yeah um, but the thing about it is i do when i'm writing in as, as it were the, the traditional idiom i'm not writing pastiche on being myself mm. that is what comes naturally to me um, I do write in other idioms yeah, as so, as pastiche. Yes, I was going to ask about that yeah. because you do have because you have really some quite close to mainstream contemporary songwriting yeah. style at times. Yeah. And do you, is that a decision you make before you? Approach Which ones are you so, thinking of when you say that? A couple, uh, couple in uh, in the shows. I mean, yeah. even uh, farewell, for example, yes. isn't isn't it no. very traditional in style. No, I suppose it's Sorry, not, the, no. there are then there are quite a lot of yeah. others who. That yeah. are catchy in a in a different way. Yeah, well, that has just occurred naturally. Mm. In fact, I suppose that could be the influence of range of the range of keys that I've tried to apply to my to my writing. Mm. You know, if I would just sit and make a tune out of the air, it tends to be kind of modal. And, and one yeah. of the songs that you're, you're doing yeah. for us today, I think it's the reprisals. Yeah. Um, you're going along for quite some time, yeah. and and you've got a set pattern, and then yeah. you do what sort of you know, it does a good impression of a middle eight. Yes. You yeah, know, which yeah. is that's love. Not... That's love is life. Oh, sorry, that's love is life. That's love yeah. is life. Exactly so. Yeah. yeah. It did used to go chorus verse, chorus verse, chorus verse. Yeah. And I and I wrote, ran, it, ran it past Paul, and Paul said, "Well, it's good, but it, it needs to be broken up." I said, "You know what? You're right." 
And I have the big advantage because people, I used to be hung up on not the fact that I don't play an instrument, but I think it, you can make a virtue of a necessity. And I mm. think that's what I have done. Um, I remember uh, uh, Sean Cannon uh, of the Dubliners, as they say, came to one of my shows, a show I wrote called Days Work back in the mid nineties about the First World War. And the song, there's a song in it called The Night. And he came up to me after the show and he said, and I know Sean of old, nice chap, great singer actually. And he, he said, I, I, lo I love that song. He said, that's great. He said, God, it, that's not, so just some Irish accent, that's not Sean's accent. Anyway, he said, that's, that's great. He said, that, that song, he said, I love that. It's got a really interesting chord structure. I said, that's it. You know, I had I know. <laughs> you know, all I do is I think, oh, it's going that way. Should we take it that way or should we take it? I mean, I just yeah. take it somewhere unexpected. Um, so it, it is in, in a way that, an advantage because if a, if a song is written by somebody who composes that an instrument, no matter how good they are, they're fitting it's, into it's channels. Yeah, it mm -hmm. just they just you know I I, find, I I heard this may not be true, but I hear tell that Richard Thompson and who's what better guitarist than Richard Thompson does not write his songs at the guitar uh -huh. because he's it's it takes him. Into even he is taken to predictable places. Mm. If you think of someone like the great Valerio, mm. you know, when he goes, How we wonder, how we wonder. That, I mean, that is, that interval, wherever it is, is so weird. Mm. I, he, I, he must have made it up in his head, not at the. Yes, yeah, so I had, had once had somebody come up to me and say, That's, and it was, I'd sung an yeah. unaccompanied song, but they said, mm. That song was definitely written at the piano, and yeah. uh, they were they were right. Actually, yeah. it was John Renborn. He's got a good. Is that right? Music, music yeah. Head on his shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's good. You know, it's good to do that. And and the other advantage I have is working with good musicians like Paul. Yes. Because thanks for bringing Paul Downs today. Yeah. Fantastic. Wow, well, brilliant. Great to hear. Yeah. Him. But it's it's sort of essentially, um, I if I come with a new song, Paul will give me feedback, and. Nine times out of ten, it's useful feedback. I said, you know what, you're right, I'll change it, and I get the credit. You know, mm -hmm. um, occasionally I disagree, very occasionally, but it's good to have a, to have that kind of editorial barrier before it goes out to the, to the yeah. public, you know, cut that verse, okay. No, well, I'll cut the first half of that verse and the second half of that verse, <laughs> then put the two bits together. You know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Hmm. What's what's on for you now? What sort of new projects or anything are you well, working nothing, at? Nothing very much. I, I've, I've, I mean, Paul and I just made a new album, but it's a traditional album, but with one new song on it. Um, but um, I have a, a new show in my head, an idea for a show, which I'm, um, I've written a song for it, um, which is how these things generally start. But I haven't actually done any work, really. Just been thinking, um, and um, also um, in 2014, I'm hoping to revive um, a day's work. Mm -hmm. Now, a day's work was written for, you know, as it were, local talent, mm -hmm. and it was written um, with certain singers in mind. That's another advantage. You, you know, you write for a particular singer, you you're constrained by what they're good at, mm -hmm. um, and um, but that's. I, I shall probably make a few amendments to it because I think some of the parts were written because somebody was there to do the part rather than because the part is necessarily that, right. you know. Um, um, so choose a new cast. Yeah, a new cast um, of younger people. Mm. In the original show, I was one of the soldiers and my great late friend John Prince was, his, was, his, was, his, was my father. And he, at that time he was 60. Now I shall be the old bloke, you know, mm. hey. <laughs> so. Well, Mick Ryan, thank you ever so much for calling in to my kitchen. It's, a pleasure. it's been brilliant to see you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, have a wonderful um, onward trip to Grimsby Town. Oh, yeah, it's all glamour. I mean, it's true, yeah. I tell you. It's fantastic. You're gigging with Paul Downs there tonight. I am, yeah, yeah. So, it's unfortunately, this, this isn't going out live, so it's not going to put in any more punters, but nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> How nice to meet thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you right. for making me open my stove. It's been a, it's fantastic, it's been a warm it? experience. Making me open my stove. Ooh, we're missing. <laughs> <laughs>